three-dimensional thinking. Since we are into self-realization, how about different models of how we can influence our cognitive minds? There's three ways of, of thinking. Deductive, which in NLP you call chunk down. Inductive, which you call chunk up. And there's options, which is chunk sideways. So if you learn something, you can become an expert. How specifically do you do something? The more you focus on something, the less contact with reality you have. You might have a very important, very clever professor at some university who unfortunately doesn't know how to make money because he doesn't know how to market his services. This creates experts. But this, this creates, my dear friends, generalists. Leonardo da Vinci mind, the one who's able to create a submarine and to uh, draw a painting and to sculpt something and even to write a book. Because these people focus not on being experts, they focus on optimal knowledge in certain fields. Example, say somebody wants to learn English. Depending on the source and Oxford Dictionary, English has between 550,000 and 2 million words. Do you know what an educated American or British, how many words do they know out of 550,000 or 2 million? How many do they know? One who trades in words might know 10,000. They know if they're educated. College degree, 25,000, statistically. So you can see that they know 5% or less being native speakers of English. How about the usage of these words? Well, apparently they use two to 3,000 in 90% of the situations. In 80% of the situations, they use 500 words. And one of these words will be swear words. <laughs> it's not going to be beehive. <laughs> It's not going to be the word contemporary, it's going to be F-U-C-K word. Because statistics tell us what is significantly important in the language. So, here comes an opportunity. Maybe rather than being an expert and using deductive notion to learn a language, I'd rather focus on 500 words which are constantly repeated in 80% of situations. This is why I learned Portuguese in 40 hours. For zero hours. And I was able to perform on stage in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Because I didn't focus on my grammar. My grammar was bad. But nobody cared. Neither did I. If I wanted to perform grammatically well, I would have to study for years. But it was not the objective. The objective was to be on stage and say, me like Brazil. Me teach mixed mental arts. And they said, we love you in Brazil. Welcome. And that's it. <laughs> if you think about it this way, the expectations we set towards ourselves on the deductive level are higher than in abductive or options level. Chunking sideways gives you a chance to be more elaborate. Chunking down gives you a chance to be more specific. But in case of linguistics, you can get more by doing less. Which is a very interesting notion, considering that sometimes when we learn a language, the first thing that they start with is teaching you grammar. No child starts learning a language with grammar. My daughter is seven years old. When she was four, she spoke three languages fluently, Spanish, Polish, and English. Trust me, she didn't know what the verb was. Oddly enough, when she is in school, where she went to school for the first time, she needed to learn about verbs and nouns and other things that she's never going to use in her life because life is not necessarily about deduction. So when mixed mental arts was created as a concept, I was thinking which categories of life, which parts of life, which sectors of life do I need to master so that I will be both happy and successful. And it turns out that marketing, self-realization, management, relationships and spirituality are exactly the ones that I'm interested in. Once you have two abilities, you can fuse them into one. And this is where induction comes in. Example, say you're a designer 
interior designer. Uh, you have certain abilities. You can deductively improve them. But what you do instead, being an interior designer, you decide to go fishing. You go fishing, you spend three hours sitting in one place, almost without breathing, waiting for a fish to take your bait. When you do this, you learn patience, correct? Now you come back home, you didn't catch anything, you start working with a client as an interior designer, and suddenly miracle happens. Client has doubts. Before the fishing adventure, you would have snapped at clients, you would have moaned about clients, you would have told the client you didn't have time because you were not patient. But now because you took patience from fishing, patience and interior design connect together. You sell more product because of the fact that you were fishing. Brain learns abilities outside of the contexts. If I know how to swim in Berkeley, I will know how to swim in Washington, D.C. If people started fusing on inductive level their capabilities coming from different fields, I think that the world, the word excellence and superhuman could finally start to exist. Patience from fishing, love from marriage, um, determination from fitness uh, club, uh, sense of humor with the best friends, um, motivation to wake up in the morning, mm. ability to enjoy life while meditating, fused together in one moment, delivered to the market. Mm. That's what precisely mixed mental arts is about. If people knew how to fuse these capabilities and abilities, basically they would be effective to the point that I don't think right now we are capable of understanding. But people don't do that. What they do instead, they separate and they are lost inside the context of the deductive level. They say, I am focused at work, but I can't be focused in church. They say, I am effective when it comes to talking to my employees, but for some reason I quarrel with my wife. I'll tell you why they do it. They don't map abilities across and they don't fuse <coughs> on an inductive level. If they did, they would be way more effective.